Hi. So this iPad Pro 12.9 inch stopped charging after the customer uh, used a cheap charging cable. What's this? So when we plug it in with a non working charger, um, it detects that it's being plugged in because on my amp meter turns on, but it doesn't draw any power. Uh, the iPad itself turns on and works, but it does not recognize uh, that it's been plugged in. So the next step with this iPad is to uh, visually check the charging port, make sure it's okay. Um, and this highlights a, a potential hazard of using cheap charging cables. If you look at the charging port on this iPad, uh, there is damage to the pins uh, and the port itself. So it looks like the, the cable was very, very tight and it literally squished the pins and the port. The, other side looks okay, um, but this side definitely has damage to the pin. And at one point, this main power pin definitely got bridged with that side. So the next step to diagnose this issue is to uh, test the charging port connector on the motherboard using a multimeter. Uh, I've checked the components around the charging port connector, and uh, this component is abnormal. Now, I can tell by just by looking at these that these four are on the same line, and the other three have the same reading. So in diode mode, it reads 0.737 on all three of them. Now, Whereas on this line, on this end, it reads 1.756, and on the top end, um, it's 0 0.036 voltage drop to ground. So that is a partial short circuit, and that seems abnormal because the other two are the same. Now, one way to confirm this would be using a uh, using another motherboard, a working motherboard, or uh, by checking the schematic diagram to see if it lists uh, any values. Now, if we check our schematic diagram here, um, it does say that that line is supposed to have a diode mode reading of 729. So that is clearly abnormal. And then if we check the other side of this resistor whose diode mode value is too low, it shows that it directly connects to the USB charging IC, the U0382. So if we look here on the motherboard, this is that chip, the CD3217. So we will replace that chip and see if that fixes the issue. So here I take the old CD3217 off using 400 Celsius temperature and 80 airflow. Um, and then I clean the old solder off using a copper braid. And then I clean the board using an iso, using a microfiber cloth and isopropyl alcohol. And then I replace the chip with a brand new CD3217 and I solder it back to the board with the same hot air temperature and airflow. And after soldering it back, it's important to clean the board um, using a toothbrush and isopropyl alcohol. Now, I missed this earlier, but if you look closely at this resistor or a fuse, um, it looks like it's blown. You can see there is a hole in it. So, and also, if we measure the fuses right next to it, they all have the same value, and this fuse shows a resistance of uh, 1 million ohms, which is very, very high. That's basically open. Um, the guys next to it have a resistance of 0 0.4 ohms, which is basically the resistance of my multimeter probes. Um, now, I do have a donor board I can harvest those components from, so I pull a fuse off of the donor and I set it aside safely. And then um, I take the fuse off of this board, and in order to put as little heat on the board as possible, I use a soldering iron along with the hot air to uh, remove the fuse. And of course, it ends up getting stuck to the ground plane on the shield. Um, I managed to get it off safely. 
And then I solder the fuse back uh, onto the board, the one that I had harvested earlier, uh, using low temperature, around 300 Celsius at like 60 airflow at the most. Okay, so we've changed the CD3217IC. Um, there's an improvement. The device shows the battery charge percentage now, but when we plug it into the charger, um, the charger turns on. It also turns the device on in case it's off, but it still doesn't charge. So we will continue the diagnosis. So when it didn't work after replacing the CD3217, um, I was quite disappointed. It's, uh, uh, turns out it's one of the shitty things Apple has decided to do with their newer devices. So all devices that take the CD3217B13 and above are paired with a ROM chip that is uh, required for the board to function. So even if you replace the chip with a perfectly working CD3217, uh, the device refuses to work. Um, it recognizes the chargers plugged in, but won't actually charge it. So to fix this device, I had to harvest a working CD3217 and its ROM chip from a uh, from an iCloud locked donor board, and um, then I reball the chip and transfer it over to uh, our device that doesn't charge. So I had to take the new uh, CD3217 off, uh, raid the pads, uh, clean the board again, um, and then I replaced it with a reballed chip, and then I made sure to thoroughly clean the board. Uh, and. Uh, as you shall see after the soldering is complete, that uh, we have a happy result. Though unfortunately, we can't do this every time without a donor board. Um, something really needs to be done about this. Okay, so this iPad Pro 12.9 that, uh, that wasn't charging has finally been repaired. As you can see now, with it plugged in, it charges, and it has a good current draw on the amp meter, 15 volts, two amps um, and it charges on both sides of the cable. So in order to fix this iPad we had to change uh, multiple components on the board. Um, this happened because of using a cheap charging cable. So because of the damage from the charging cable it caused the charging port to get physically damaged it electrically blew a resistor on the charging port uh, connector, then it damaged the CD3217 chip, and it damaged the ROM chip. So to fix it, all of these components had to be replaced. And uh, yeah, the device is now fixed and it works.